Okay, so uh, about two weeks ago, I think or so, I made a video about how much I loved my new Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II. And it's one of the best performing videos ever on this channel, especially like early on. I've had other videos where they take off later, but this one had like 20,000 views, just went nuts right out of the gate. And people were excited and I was excited and that's why I made the video. <sighs> and then I ran into a couple of issues that stole all my joy and excitement and instilled terror in me that I was going to have to come back and warn everybody to not buy this camera. And last night I was laying in bed and going, oh, I got to sell it. What am I going to get? Because it just, well, it had, it had, it was having a couple of really big issues. Thankfully, I've sorted through the two big issues and I just wanted to share the fixes, sort of, or one's a workaround, one's just a little bit of knowledge about how things work because even when I was searching online it seemed like people were having similar issues and hadn't figured them out but thankfully oh, I think I've I think I've kind of solved them and I mean if you're watching this video as a follow-up to the last one this may you may not even need to do these things depending on what you're doing it, it may have no impact but for me I was like freaking out I was texting my buddy Dave Mays who um, had kind of put me onto Olympus and seeing if he had similar issues and he hadn't really and Anyway, it was helpful and we got them sorted out. So let's talk about the two big issues. The first one is that when I was using the clean HDMI out to connect to a capture card like this to hopefully use it for live streaming, I was just getting a no connection error on it. And it just wouldn't work. I'm like, what the heck? And my G7 is working just fine connected via HDMI, but I wanted this one so the autofocus and I could move in and move out and talk and, you know, better quality and all those kinds of things. But no matter what I did, if I put it in record mode, which is the clean HDMI out where all these icons go away, it wouldn't work. And then I'd go back to monitor mode, which puts all the icons on the screen and it would work. And I'm like, well, this isn't helpful because I don't want icons all over the screen. I want a clean HDMI output. Well, Thankfully, back here I have a PlayStation 5 and a gaming monitor, and those two things sparked something in my brain along with texting Dave to figure out what the issue was. Because Dave was saying, oh, well, it's bizarre that your clean HDMI isn't working because like that is a ProRes 422 high-quality signal. It, it should be working. And I went, ah, because the PlayStation 5 can output 4K 120 frames per second HDR footage over HDMI. Unfortunately, there are currently only three TVs on the planet that I'm aware of that can accept that signal over HDMI and zero gaming monitors. I was looking for a gaming monitor. I was like, I should get a 4K 120 frames per second one. And then I found out in order to do 4K 120 frames per second, you need HDMI version 2.1 which has started, I think, at version 1, and then 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, and then jumped to version 2, and then version 2.1. All that means is the older ones could only do a little bit of bandwidth, and every generation they expanded how much bandwidth they could do. And, like, early on, 1080p, no problem, could do the bandwidth. And then when they are started introducing, like, higher frame rates, 60 frames per second, 120 frames per second, started adding in HDR, started doing 4K, 4K 30, 4K 60 frames per second, it, they had to keep expanding the bandwidth. And what's happening with this camera is 422 ProRes footage is fairly serious business. It requires a lot of bandwidth. So if the device that you're connecting the camera to can't handle that big of bandwidth like some monitors or different devices like a 1080p capture card then what will happen is you'll just get no signal because they can't communicate to each other and that's what was happening even the g7 while it can output 4k over hdmi it's not doing 422 ProRes at like a, a like a ton of data rate it's just doing it at normal so my hdmi capture card could accept that it probably needs something like a HDMI 1.4 or HDMI 2.0. What I found was I have a 4K monitor. It has one version 1.4 port, which can do 4K 30 frames per second, and one version 2.0 port, which can do 4K 60 frames per second. And it would work on there. But my little small HD monitor that only does 480p wouldn't work on there. Capture card wouldn't work on there. And so it's just something to be aware of, depending what you're connecting it to, it may or may not support the full 4K picture. Now here's your workaround. If you're like me and you've got an older 1080p capture card, 
set the camera to 1080p. And that's gonna reduce the amount of bandwidth. It's not gonna be 422 4K ProRes. It's gonna go down to a 1080p signal. And so on my camera, I can go set it to 1080p, 30 frames per second, which is great for like live or webcam, and it works fine. But this does not work with 4K. Now, maybe I could get a new 4K capture card, or you may have one where it is no problem. Or if you have like a good Atomos Ninja or some kind of external recorder, they've already got that figured out. It'll connect and it should just work fine. But if you have older products like me, an older small HD monitor, older capture card, it just won't work because they just don't accept that kind of bandwidth coming through them. Make sense? So just be careful what you connect it to. It could also be you might, may need to upgrade your cable. If you had like an old cable and it didn't support like the wider bandwidth, that could be the problem too. You can check that out as well. But the bigger issue for me was actually the audio on this camera. I was running into a problem where everything was super hissy. Internal mic, um, my Rode VideoMic Pro Plus connected and and this can happen in cameras where they have preamps built in. A preamp takes a low level mic signal, boosts it up to a higher signal. And if they're not good quality, they get noisy, especially when you start having to crank on them a little bit more, do a lot of gain, do a lot of volume correction. And the first video I shot with this, I actually noticed some hiss, but I thought, oh, I must not have had it set right or was running it too hot or hadn't had my mic set up properly. But in doing some more testing, what I found was it didn't matter how low or how high, or even if I was using the internal mic, it was just super hissy. All right, welcome to the first test. This is the VideoMic Pro Plus at, yeah, zero dB. Camera is set to minus three. What do we hear? Is it? Is it noisy? A little noise floor? Well, now let's change it to... Oh, that's plus 20. That's going to be hot. Okay, but hold on. Okay, so let's take it all the way down. So this is minus 10 on the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus. Minus... Oh, sorry. Plus 20 on the Rode. Minus 10 set on the Olympus. Does it make any difference? And unfortunately that was ruining it for me from a vlogging perspective because I wanna be able to vlog with this camera, put on a microphone on the top, but with that much hiss, to me like that's just so distracting and ugh, just brutal. Thankfully I was looking around online and somebody had said how they had enabled some kind of Olympus recorder setting and that made their audio better. And I thought, oh, I wonder if this will help me. And it did. When I go into the menu and I basically turn off the volume controls that the camera does, the hiss doesn't go away completely, but the noise floor goes down massively. And then what I'm able to do with my VideoMic Pro Plus is set it to plus 20 dB, which is what it's on right now. And basically the noise floor goes down, the microphone boosts itself, and the hiss essentially goes away. You might hear, I don't know, a little bit of vent noise or kids running around or stuff like that, but it's not hissy all the time. Now, if I set the mic to like zero dB or minus 10, well, then when I have to crank it up so much, you do hear that noise floor still audible there, but you can work around it a little bit by having a microphone that can boost audio signal. Now, in talking with my buddy Dave, he did not have that issue with his OMD EM1 Mark II. His was fine. He never noticed the noise issue. And like in the studio, you can use an external recorder, even a cheap one like this little Zoom works fine. That's how I've done the last couple of videos. Video Mic Pro Plus, right into this, record, zero, like very clean audio, zero issues. But for vlogging, being able to go out and around, it it's a bit odd. Now I'd say I probably got a camera with a bad preamp or something. Maybe it's a firmware issue. I'm only on 3.2, I haven't upgraded to 3.4 because I've heard that actually makes the IBIS worse even though it's supposed to make it better. Could be something that, it, it is a really weird issue. Um, it just seems like something's off with the camera. But again, I found a way around it. I don't know if taking something like a, a new Deity Duo would have the similar, where you could disable it and you'd have enough gain for it to sound good. Um, there's probably a little bit more tweaking and playing with it. If you had like a Rode Video Micro, would it still sound okay? I don't know. I need to investigate that a little bit more. Um, but again, it doesn't seem like it's, like searching online, some people are like, ah, it's a little bit noisy. Other people are like, no, compared to everything else, it's fine. Just turn down the volume. 
it seems like this is maybe an intermittent issue and I got a bad one. Hopefully. Again, I've got to work around. So I'm back to being happy and I'm okay recommending this camera because um, it still checks so many boxes. And now that I've got this, the audio one was really a big one. The HDMI one, I'm like, this is weird. I don't understand it. I've now got it figured out. I wish I could do like a dumber 4K lower bandwidth because it would still look good. Like the G7 in 4K, it looks good even going into 1080p capture card. May do some more experimenting to figure that out. But anyway, I think I think we've got it solved. So if you had those issues, hopefully that's helpful. Um, I was reading on Twitter yesterday that actually asking people to subscribe to your channel, the data tells you that that is massively helpful. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I would really appreciate it. And that bell notification means that you actually see the videos that I put out. Otherwise, you're rolling the dice and if a video doesn't immediately do well, YouTube won't show it to the vast majority of my subscribers. So if you wanna see my content because you enjoy it, please hit that bell. There's gonna be, I don't know, all sorts of more content like this related to cameras and things. It's not all live streaming. The last couple were because I got a product to test out this Teradek Video X and I, it got me excited about it for a little bit. So anyway, I'm Justin Rivas. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, comments, leave it in the comments below. And now we fade in some music and let the boxes show up here. And a subscribe button somewhere down here. And I talk in a low voice. Subscribe.